So in this course, we are going to be learning how to complete two uh, very important methodologies that you will be using in the field in your career as public administrators. Before we get into those methodologies, I think it's really important for us to look at what exactly it is we're studying with those methodologies. So we're just going to very briefly talk about policies and programs. Um, and a great place to start is to ask, why do these things exist? So this is a definition I found in a textbook some years ago that has really stood out to me as being really helpful. Um, public policy is what public officials within government and by extension, the citizens they represent choose to do or not do about policy problems. So public policy is what public officials, right, elected officials uh, representing us, right, in our representative democracy, um, decide to do or to not do about a public problem. So these are problems by which we, we mostly agree that we have some collective responsibility. One more point of this definition that is really important is it's something that they choose to do or not to do. Ignoring a problem is a form of policy. So first, we'll just kind of briefly talk about the policy process and how our work fits into it. It really starts with problem definition and agenda setting. So this is the stage at which um, policymakers recognize a problem that exists in the world uh, and they uh, decide that it's time to at least talk about it. Once they talk about it, they enter the policy formulation stage where they start coming up with policy solutions for that problem. Uh, that's followed by legitimation, hopefully, right, which is the uh, process by which a policy idea becomes law. Um, this is when officials pass a bill um, and the executive signs it, uh, and that policy becomes legal. Uh, implementation, of course, is the doing of the thing, right? It's, it's when policy is, is actually occurring. Uh, we should always evaluate our policies uh, after they're on the ground to make sure they're, they're doing what we projected um, and make changes or adjustments as needed. So our work is really going to come into play in the first two stages here, right? Defining the problem and setting the agenda um, and coming up with those solutions. Some folks would argue that government does too much. It steps in too much, it interferes too much, um, and that we really don't need to have so many policies or so many laws. Um, but uh, on this slide here, you can see uh, many examples of things that do trigger uh, policy responses. And I think most folks, regardless of political persuasion, would agree that, that policy responses are necessary um, in some of these cases, or if not all of these cases. Um, and there are many things in the environment that can trigger a policy response from political changes from, from one elected official to another uh, with different, um, different preferences and different ideas about what should be. Um, when moral and ethical issues uh, arise, uh, those usually demand some kind of response. Um, the economy is a great driver of a, a great many policies that exist uh, in the world. Um, you know, people really care about money. Uh, most people would agree safety and security demand some kind of public policy response, of course. Um, we've all lived in the last few years through a public health emergency, and so public health demands policy responses, uh, as do natural disasters in some cases. Um, and then, of course, focusing events, which are uh, kind of large scale events that uh, demand our attention and demand and highlight that uh, we've got something happening that that needs to be examined and corrected. Switching gears briefly to programs. Uh, so a program, uh, and this is another good definition from a textbook from years ago. Uh, a program is a set of resources and activities uh, directed toward one or more common goals. Programs themselves are not organizations. Uh, this is a, a distinction I'm going to make many times. Programs are not organizations. Programs are administered by organizations. So um, uh, No Child Left Behind was a program administered by the Department of Education. Programs are guided by strategy and planning. 
uh, without um, sound strategic planning, uh, a program is just, um, well, it would be chaos. Uh, there is a logic model, which we are going to go through that determines what gets done and why it gets done within a program. And these are usually ongoing, right? They're not kind of one-off events. Um, it's not something that gets done once and then it's over. Uh, programs kind of tend to have a life to them and they tend to be ongoing. And we have programs in part as uh, implementation of policy. Um, it is the sometimes the provision of services that is demanded by a policy. Um, and it is the pursuit of, of goals and objectives. So um, again, it's kind of driven by that strategy um, and it exists to fulfill some need in the, in the public that may not be met by the, by the private sector. So we're not gonna dwell too much on this for now. I think a lot of the stuff will make a lot more sense uh, in the coming weeks as we get into picking apart these different pieces of policies and programs, and we look how to examine them.